To support and operate aircraft, to engage in attacks on targets afloat and ashore, to engage in sustained operations in support of other forces, is the mission of our aircraft carriers. To keep our fleets mobile, nearly all replenishments of provisions and supplies are carried out at sea. While preparing for and during these replenishments, and until stores are struck below, flight operations cannot be conducted. Under the old materials handling system, preparations for replenishment must start long before the AF comes alongside. About 2,000 feet of gravity conveyors have to be spread out on deck. Strike down points are rigged for replenishment. The Navy is continually evaluating and improving materials handling equipment to cut down replenishment time. This is a report on recent research and development efforts by the Bureau of Supplies and Accounts and the Bureau of Ships working as a team to improve the materials handling capabilities of CBA 59 class carriers. This study and resulting improvements were made in the Saratoga. Previous studies made by Busanda have resulted in modernized materials handling in the reefer ships like the one shown here and speeded up breakup. The new AF equipment has speeded up transfer rates. This makes fast handling on receiving ships even more important. Nylon cargo nets developed by the Navy Research Facility are lightweight and capable of handling heavy loads. Deck edge elevators on the carrier are used as net landing areas. Nets must be unloaded quickly to keep the landing areas clear. Under the old materials handling system, stores have to be placed on conveyors without sorting. This later creates major segregation problems that hold up strike down. Hundreds of men are required to keep stores moving on the hangar deck. Multiple handling along the roller conveyors breaks open the cases and rips the bagged goods. The complicated system requires overpasses for fore and aft and a thwart ship movement of stores. Under the old system, most of the provisions must be first struck down to the mess decks, where they are stacked and later segregated. Saratoga had three stores elevators. 
they extended only from the second deck to storeroom levels. Boxes had to be loaded one by one and offloaded the same way. Using all three elevators, only a few tons per hour could be struck below. Many handlings were required to strike down to lower decks. Below deck areas soon became clogged with stores. As this happened, stores began to back up in all areas, slowing strike down. Stores built up away from strike down points and had to be rehandled many times. Many hours after the replenishment from the reefer, stores were still being segregated and struck below from the mess decks. These are also bomb assembly areas. They must be cleared before bombs can be handled and planes rearmed. These, then, are the problems that confronted the materials handling engineers in the CDA 59 class carriers. Lack of store segregation at the receiving area resulting in later multiple handling. excessive manpower. Excessive damage. Lack of direct access to storerooms. To illustrate the new materials handling methods, let's go aboard the Saratoga, where the new system is installed. Records are checked and requisitions submitted long before replenishment day. The big carriers consume more than 20,000 pounds of provisions per day. Now, with the new materials handling system, flight operations can be conducted right up to the time replenishment is to begin. The two after stores elevators have been ripped out and replaced with vertical tray lifts. Extending directly from the hangar deck to all storeroom levels. Under the old system, using gravity conveyors on the hangar deck, transfer from the AF had to be split up. It was necessary to transfer provisions for storerooms located forward in the carrier before that for storerooms located aft was sent across. This made extra work in the AF and made it difficult to balance the tonnage between transfer rigs. Now gravity conveyors are no longer required on the hangar deck, saving many hours of rigging. Pallets are laid out inboard of the elevators. These are tubular nestable pallets developed by the Naval Supply Research and Development Facility. With pallets laid out, net loads can be segregated as they are received. Forklift trucks pick up the loaded pallets and take them directly to strike down points. All strike down points can be worked simultaneously.
A ton at a time is moved with no damage to the provisions. Pallets can be spotted alongside strike down points. Now, strike down can be made directly from the hangar deck to storeroom. These tray lifts are simple to install and require very little space. They were designed with the capacity to handle all sizes of provision boxes and bags. The lifts serve all levels. To offload at any level, a simple unloader is placed in position. Now only a few men are required to strike down stations. Gravity conveyors take the provisions from the tray lifts to the storerooms. An intercom is provided in the tray lifts to control strike down. So if a bottleneck develops at one level, it is a simple matter to shift unloading to another. Each of these can strike down 45 tons per hour. forward tray lift comes up only to second deck, it is fed through a bomb elevator coming down from the main deck. Plans now are to extend the lift up to the main deck for easier access. Every means of strike down are still used. Now, with segregation upon receipt and tray lifts handling most of the cargo, other strike down points operate smoothly. New convertible ladders designed by the research facility save time in rigging for replenishment. They were installed at strategic places in the Saratoga. The tubular pallets are nestable and take up very little space for storage. Wheels can be quickly attached without tools. The nestable pallet then becomes a live dolly for handling stores. Fresh provisions are sometimes received from foreign sources in open boxes. Even these can be struck below with the vertical tray lifts without damage.
lightweight aluminum four-wheel dollies being used here to transport the fresh provisions have a capacity of 4,000 pounds. Before the tray lifts were installed, large working parties were required for daily breakouts. Now, only a few men are required, and provisions can be broken out immediately before meals. This, then, is the new materials handling system. Transfer can start with very little preparation in the carriage. Early segregation of stores onto pallets. Movement of large quantities at one time, eliminating roller conveyors and damage. Fewer men in working parties. The tremendous savings in time. Using the new materials handling system, time to strike the stores below has been reduced by more than 50%. As a result of this study, the Bureau of Ships plans to install the new system in all the 59 class carriers. As research and development efforts continue, replenishment time will be cut even more, so our carriers will be combat ready. <laughs>